So when we're training computer vision models, we need to take into account the high parameters. So in this video here, we're going to talk about high parameter tuning. We're going to go over a guide, talk about some of the different high parameters. What are the parameters that's going to affect the training the most? Because these are some pretty important ones. If you want to do model evaluation, you want to test out different models and so on. It might be that your model is not converging or you don't get good enough results. Then it's really important that we know how we can do high parameter tuning and also how does these parameters act like affect our model training. So first of all, like what is act like a high parameter and it's just a high level structural setting for the algorithm. So it could be for our optimizer, could be for a loss function and so on. So we have a bunch of different stuff going on under the hood when we're training AI models, either for the training, the optimization, the bat size, how we handle the data set and so on. So all of these parameters is basically just settings for both our model data set and these algorithms that we're using to train AI and machine learning models. So first of all, we have the learning rate. It's a very important high parameter when we're talking about training. Could be that our model is not learning fast enough. Might be that we have too low of a learning rate. So the learning rate basically just determines how large steps do we actually like take? How much are we going to update our parameters for every single run that we do? Could be an iteration, could be after every single batch. And then we also have our batch size, which is basically just how many images or how many data points are we going to combine throw through our model at the same time. So normally you have like 8, 16, 32 images that you batch together, you throw them through your model, you calculate the loss and so on with your ground truth. So that's why we need our bounding boxes, annotate our data. So we have our ground truth. Then we can calculate the loss based on that. So we have our ground truth, we have our prediction from our model, we calculate our loss with our loss function. So that's also some high parameters going on in there for the loss function, especially the learning rate. Then we take that and then we can just go back in our neural network again, update each individual parameter and then the learning rate determines how much we're going to update it for every single batch that we push it through. And then over time, when we just keep doing that, our model will start to get better and better. Data in, we do the calculations, we tune our high parameters, we tune our model parameters and so on. And then the model is going to learn over time. And at the end, we're going to minimize the loss. So the objective of these AI models is actually just to minimize the loss at the end. Because if we have a loss of zero, it basically just means that we're able to have a model that can do all the predictions that we want from the data set that we're feeding into the model. Then we also have the number of epochs. So for one epoch, we could have like 100 batches, a batch size of eight, we could have 100 batches. So that means we have 800 images in our training set. And then we take those 800 images, our whole training data set, throw it through the model, and there will be a single epoch. So when we have done that, we just do it over and over again until our model is converging and it's not learning any longer or before it's also going to overfit. So an epoch is basically just how many times do we want to pass our data set through our model for optimizing our parameter. Then we also have high parameters for models such as like how many channels do we want to have in our image, the number of layers in our convolutional neural networks, types of activation functions and so on. So we already have all of those things predefined with the YOLO model. So you only have the other high parameters, but if you're building your own custom machine learning, computer vision models and so on, this is some very important parameters to take into account as well. So here at Autolytics, we actually use some generic algorithms to go in and optimize these high parameters, both for the learning rate and so on. So depending on your data set, depending on your size of your data set and so on, and also the learning rate and all that, it's going to automatically basically go in and optimize these high parameters. So just if you don't know anything about these high parameters, how to tune them, how they will affect your model. If you're not just doing experimentation, just go with default ones. They're pretty good. And also in most cases, it's going to be the optimal hyper parameters. So the method here at Autolytics is actually like mutation. So we just locally search for some high parameters. We make some small modifications, see does that act like affect the model training in a good way or in a bad way. And then we basically just try to figure out by mutation, what are the best high parameters. Here we can see an image of different high parameters being tested out. And also just because we have like one high parameter, we change another, that doesn't mean that the first one is actually like the best one. They all depend on each other. So these variables, parameters and so on, they're not independent. So it's really important to go in and do the high parameter tuning and also know what it is. So when we're preparing for high parameter tuning, we need to go in and take a look at the metrics. So we need to see how does a model converge, how does it train and so on. So we take a look at the F1 score, the average position. We can also go and take a look at the precision recall and so on. We have videos covering all of those parameters or basically just our metrics when we're training computer vision models. 
So here to end off the video, let's just go through each individual step for doing this high parameter tuning. So first of all, we initialize the high parameters, could be just with the initial ones, and then we do mutation of the high parameters. So it's going to take care of that automatically with Ultralytics. We then train our model, we do model evaluation, and then we can lock the results, take a look at the results, evaluate our model, is it good enough? How can we improve the model? Maybe better data, high parameter tuning, and so on. And then we're just going to repeat this in an iterative loop until we find the best high parameters and also end up with the best model. Once we have the best model, we can export it, use it in own applications and projects. So I hope you learned a ton this video here. Definitely make sure that you understand how high parameters work. We have pretty good default ones in Autolytics, so you can use it pretty much out of the box. And then I just hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy tuning.